If you're tired of the standard business and marketing fundamentals, frameworks, and funnels, <laughs> you need a little mischief. Get ready to turn up the volume on the CEO Mischief Maker podcast, where you access conversations with seasoned business owners who have smashed through mindset barriers, innovated the standard boring business and marketing playbooks, and executed future-paced strategies with bleeding edge tools and tactics to micro fail their way into massive success and growth. We are Mindset Impact Strategic Catalysts, helping innovative entrepreneurs focus. We are CEO Mischief Makers. Ready to make a little mischief? Hey, hey, CEO Mischief Makers, welcome to the Strategy and Tactics conversation with JC Height. JC, you ready to dive in and get down in ground level and, and go through the weeds of this whole thing? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> yes. So I'm just going to do the disclaimer at the front of this conversation because lots of stuff has been discussed. You need to go back and listen to Monday's episode and Wednesday's episode if you haven't already, because we're going to now take this plane and land it and start talking about specifically things that you can do, frameworks, uh, roadmaps, uh, those kinds of things that you can actually take away from this conversation and start implementing in your business. So JC, take us through that. We talked about your um, height, um, the franchise. We've talked about the previous experience you've had in the mindset shifts. What can someone use? What strategy and tactics would you recommend someone who has an agency or any type of business to be able to uh, actually hit the ground running and create some success? Yeah. So uh, I actually got a book on agency owners. I'm going to talk about the first thing I talk about this book, because I think this concept um, is something that will ring true no matter how you look in your business and where you're at in your business. Um, it's also every new employee at height. I personally only teach one thing from an HR perspective and every single new employee within the first month of them working, I normally take a class of six to 10 through this right here. And it's the methodology we use that I stole not stole. I asked to borrow. <laughs> I have permission to use uh, from a man named Ron Kaufman, who uh, absolutely love his book. It's called uh, Uplifting Service. And for me, it's how we serve our people. There's 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 six levels of service when uh, when dealing with any type of relationship. So what I would do is right now I'm going to present everyone listening to this has an agency or has a business or whatever they're doing. I want you to think about five interactions you have with your clients. Five interactions. So that could be a, a first call. That could be a, a, a strategy call. That could be an intro call. That could be a, a, a monthly report. That could be a weekly email. But just think of every interaction you have with your clients. So Ron Kaufman describes these five levels. And as, as I explain the five levels, think with each one of these interactions, which level are you at? That's the goal. With each interaction, what level are you at? So level one is basic. Basic level of service. So basic is as borderline to illegal as you can possibly do without being illegal, right? You order a hamburger, you get a hamburger, right? I send you an email, you're going to respond to that email, right? It's it's a very simple, basic, right? Surprisingly enough, a lot of us are at this level, just so we're clear. The next level, the ne the next level, um, the next level is expected. What do we expect? From the business owner. So I'll, I'll give you an example. I just sent you an email. It was Friday. It was Friday evening. I want you to respond at least, but I expect that you're going to email me back next Monday, right? Oh, we just got on a call and I booked my first call with MK. I'm going to go on, learn about our business and we're going to see what happens. And I, my expectation that she at least shows up, right? You know, at a bare minimum shows up, but I expect that she's smiling, she's ready, so on and so forth, right? So this is expected. The next is desired. Right? What do we desire? I just sent that email. It was Friday afternoon. I expect her to get back to me on Monday, but man, if she could get back to me this weekend, that would be really great. Right? That it, hey, I've got this first call with MK. I've never seen her in life, but I know she does some really incredible stuff with automation, with AI, with all these things. And so I'm, I'm hoping that she already looked me up. That was my expectation. She already looked me up. She already knew my business and what I am and what I do and all this good stuff. Uh, you know what? I just signed up with Bob's agency. Uh, my, my desire is that we get some results. My expectation is that we get results in 90 days, right? So on and so forth. So you have basic, expected, 
desired. And then you have the next two levels. The first three levels are all about what our clients are thinking, what they believe, what they do, what their interpretation is. But the next two levels is where we go beyond that. Rapport covers a lot of problems that you have. The more rapport, and we talked about this in episode number two on Wednesday, the better the relationship you have with your clients, the easier it is to overcome obstacles when they come. So the fourth level is surprising. How often on every single interaction, how can you leave your client just a little bit surprised? Man, I sent that email on Friday. I was hoping he got back to me. And my expectation was he got back to me the next Monday. I would love it if he got back. Oh, holy crap. He just got back to me the same day. That's awesome. That was really exciting. Wow. You know, I signed up for SEO. They told me it was going to take six months. That was the expectation. I was really open that we could do it a little bit sooner. But would you believe it? I just... I just saw that my rankings went up a lot because they did X, Y, and Z. How do we surprise our clients? This could be as simple as you showing up to that first call and it's like, man, I already did a full analysis on your website. You didn't pay me. You didn't ask for it. You didn't need it. I've already done all of this research and I'm going to give it to you for free, right? How do we surprise our clients? It could be, man, I just saw they were having a bad day the other day. And I also noticed that they're Green Bay Packers fans. So I sent them a little teddy bear with the Green Bay Packers. What? How can you surprise your clients? And the fifth level is unbelievable. How do we give an unbelievable experience? And these, when you surprise your clients, when you give unbelievable experiences, what it does is builds remarkable rapport and it makes people talk, right? So as we're thinking about our agency and we're thinking about growing, and by the way, so I'm thinking about this with my clients. I'm also using this with the people under me. How do I serve my team? I'm also using this with the people above me. How do I give them an unbelievable experience? I'm using this with my partners. I'm using this with my wife, by the way, and she knows it too. And so how do we give an unbelievable experience? I'll give you an example. And this is crazy. We start thinking about crazy things and you get addicted to this stuff. And I'll give you several examples, but let's say Let's let's say, and we know this as an agency owner, our, our biggest churn happens in the first 90 days. After 90 days, churn goes down dramatically. So what would it look like if MK was my client? And after 90 days, I called up MK and I was like, look, I'm super excited. I, I know the results aren't perfect yet, but I know we're on the right track. I'm really pumped about this. And I'm just so pumped up. I hope this is okay. I, I bought you a trip on a Royal Caribbean cruise for two. Uh, and I just wanted to celebrate. You can use it whenever you want. And it, here it is, right? And I give it to you. A Royal Caribbean cruise for two people is about 1200 bucks. Normally, we make about $1,000 to $1,500 profit on a client. So if this literally helps them just stay one more month, it pays for itself. You can get front row tickets to almost any professional sport for under $1,000. Now, let me ask you, what's the likelihood of your client canceling on you in the next two months if you put them courtside at an NBA game? Yeah. Very unlikely. Now, I'm not saying use this to do crappy service. What I'm saying is, is that the more we can show that we care about our people and love our people, the longer it'll go. At height, we have under 6% turnover, which is incredibly low in our industry. I just got done taking our entire company, not only our entire company, and their families, including children, to a different country. We went to Costa Rica to an all-inclusive four nights, three days resort, all you can eat, all you can drink, everything, our entire team, right? How do we go above and beyond to serve our people? And so for me, when in doubt, oh, JC, but, but our pricing is this, they need a discount because they're losing. No, 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 serve them. doesn't matter. Go above and beyond. They asked for a $200 discount, give them a $300. Oh, they asked for this, give them that. They're having a bad day. They just had a child, send them a gift. They just had a, got married, send them another gift. Every, how do we find, and you get addicted to this. You get addicted to this stuff, right? And what it does is it gives you time. Most of us, and I, again, I'm making the assumption we're doing great work and we're doing the best we can in PPC and SEO and automation and all this good stuff. I'm making this assumption for us. But the reality is most of us, most of our customers, we talked about emotional versus logical thinking. Most of us make emotional decisions. Crap, we're not hitting goals this month. What can we cancel? How can we say, let's cancel the marketing company. Uh, uh, just uh, let's cancel the market. Like, you want to get rid of that thought. 
you want them to think, oh man, that is it. I can't can't I can't cancel on MK. Oh my God, please don't make me cancel on MK. I love that woman. Don't make me do it. You start doing this and you get some incredible, incredible results. On average, our team, you have to, if you want to recruit someone from our team, which our team is incredible, you I will tell you right now, you're gonna to have to offer them at least triple what we pay. That's the average that someone leaves height to get is triple the salary. Why? Because we love them in a ridiculous way, right? And so this methodology has been since day one. I started it. We've carried that on. We only hire people that love people. Uh, If you're an angry person or a rude person, you can be incredibly talented. You probably won't last here. Everything is about how do we uplift the service at every single touch point. That is incredible, really. So uh, everybody listening, please, those five levels, as JC was going through them, I guarantee you every single person listening was gauging themselves as to where they are on those five levels. And if you're at one level, hey, no, no skin off anybody's nose, just absolutely fantastic. How can you, what can you do? How, who can you become yourself to be able to get you to the next level up. And it's not like going from, well, if you're in level two, you want to go to five immediately. There are steps. Give yourself some grace. Accept and be very proud of where you are. And then ask yourself, who do I, it's all a matter of who you become. It's not just what you do. There is a, if you haven't seen this yet, in JC, and we'll talk to uh, Karen, um, his wife, later, because she has a whole different thing that she does. But if you haven't figured out yet that JC, the person he has become to create the successful company that he has, has been a stepwise process. That's all you need to do. Take Just start with these five things. I love how you outlined it. And judge yourself as to where you are. And now say, okay, who do I need to become to get to the next level? What Not just what I need to do, but what is in my heart? What do I have to, who do I have to be in order to be the surprise person in my, in my business? And then who do I need to be to, to, to just blow them away completely? Uh, That, that's really what I take from you, JC, is you have become the person who can run a 350 person agency, a 250 person agency, be on the Inc. 500, delight and surprise and just blow away your customers and your employees. Is there any other piece of advice for someone who is aspiring to become that person for their own business that you can give to keep them moving on that continuum of service? Well, I would I would make one little audit to that statement. I would I would I don't think I've become it. I think I'm hopefully becoming it, but I think it's a journey and it's something that never ends. I mean, I have stressful days just like everyone else. I have crappy days. I have uh, anxiety and scared and fear and all this. That's normal. It's normal. It's normal in business to have this. We were just talking to one of our uh, one of our agencies just the other day, and the owners there, and 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 they're crushing it. They're doing so many incredible things. But he came to me, he's like, "JC, I don't know what to do." And I'm like, "Beautiful, man. I mean, none of us know what no, and especially in our world where there's such a facade out there. There's so many, you know, you know, you don't know who's winning actually, and what's really happening in people's lives, and so on and so forth, and it." It's uh, it's it's important to just always be, as you just said, on that journey of becoming whoever. My commitment is to become a leader worthy of leadership. That's my sole focus as a human being. Everything I do, in fact, it's on my board. If you are watching the video, it's on my board right here. I want to become a leader worthy of leadership, worthy of someone's of the following that I have. And so it's all about getting better every day. Yes. And I agree with you. These are human emotions. These are human situations that we all have to deal with. But really, I, I, uh, and and that may be the next, uh, that that's my next question. What are you aspiring to next? Okay. So you've already done this before. You've already done the agency with hundreds of employees. You are, have now had uh, success for maybe not five years. I don't know how long the actual, um, franchise of the agency has been going, but at least with this business, you've had that success for five years. What's next? What are you aspiring to? 
I want to change the way corporations operate. I think today in today's world, big corporate, I think is beautiful in a lot of ways, but I think it's terrible in a lot of ways. Facebook just laid off 11,000 people. Why? Because it couldn't afford them? Mm, probably not. It's probably because of shareholders, right? Yeah. I want to create a representation of a corporation that serves its team members, right? Like it's team members so incredibly well working on right now, a deal with a university. My goal is that if you work at height, I pay a hundred percent of your kids, uh, uh, university scholarship, that is food, tuition, books, you name it. We pay a hundred percent of it. That's my goal, right? If we can create, I believe in a world where a corporation serves its people ridiculously well, and therefore, the people turn around and serve the corporation at a ridiculous level. And because of that, they then serve their clients at a ridiculous level, right? And so right now, we're on a path. I believe we can get to 1,000 employees in the next few years. And, and with that, I believe we can change the way the industry, the way business, you know, is done at a, at a whole. Um, some people look at that stuff and, you know, I, I'm not a political person at all on, on both sides of the fence. But for me... I believe that I have the, I'm the owner. I have the full power as a business owner to do as much for my people as I want. And so how do I balance that profits, savings, benefits, salaries, as, 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 as well as I can, again, to really serve, to really serve. Okay, hold on. If your mindset was shifted, you were inspired to innovate and you were spurred into action, don't just move on with your day. Focus, my friend, and take a few minutes to visit ceomischiefmaker.com to learn more about the value that was shared with you today. Please act now and create some CEO mischief of your own.